lab four, first question. So this has five animations. We'll look at some or all of them. And for each animation, you'll see in the lab question, the table, where you have to answer these four questions. So be careful. The first question is about electric potential energy. Does that increase, decrease, or remain the same? The next is about electric potential. Is it higher in the beginning? That means it decreases, or, or is it higher at the end, or not change? So it's a similar question to this, different words, but one is looking at the energy, the other is looking at the potential. And sometimes they're the same, and sometimes they're different, right? depending on whether it's a positive or negative charge. And in that animation, is there an a external force acting on it, or is it just being acted on by the force of the field? So we want to know, we want to answer that question. And finally, choose the correct free body diagram for that situation out of the list of 10 different free body diagram choices and each has a letter okay now keep in mind Newton's second law so if an object's accelerating there has to be a net force if an object is moving at a constant velocity doesn't mean there's no force but it means the net force is zero and since we're talking about energy remember the conservation of energy equation if no external force acts, that could be friction or it could be an external force, someone pushing it in this case, then the energy, the total energy can change. But if there's no net external, uh, no net external work happening, then any loss of potential energy has to be a loss of kinetic or vice versa. So keep all this in mind when we answer the questions. Now let's go to animation one. Oh yes, <coughs> uh, one more thing. Um, watch the video on electric potential introduction. Um, I think it's a good idea if you watch that before you do the lab or the assignment. Okay, so here we are. Uh, animation one, and I'll run it. So this a red charge. Let's see what happens. We can reset it, run it again. Okay, think about what the essential features of that are that we need to pay attention to. I'll run it one more one more time. Watch, watch carefully. Okay, so what we're seeing is that the red charge is moving away from the red plate. It's moving in the direction of the field. Remember, this is a uniform field between charged plates, a positively charged plate on the right and a negatively charged plate on the left. And the object moves and it appears to accelerate. If you wanted to be sure it was accelerating, you could take some, you could take some measurements as to how long it takes to get halfway and but anyway so it's accelerating so if it's accelerating in the natural direction that it should accelerate that's with the field then <clears throat> it's losing potential energy and gaining kinetic energy and there's no external force just the force of the field on it and because it's a positive charge, remember the positive plate um, is a high electric potential and the negative plate is a low electric potential. So you'll see that the energy depends on the charge, but the potential only depends on the electric field. And so the right is high potential, the left is low potential, so it starts at a high potential, notice the difference between potential and potential energy. The potential is the V, the potential energy is the UE. And so for a positive charge, it's the same. It loses potential energy 
it goes, it starts at a high potential and goes to a low potential. <coughs> and the <coughs> only force acting on it is the electric force. And so the free body diagram should show a single force in the direction it's accelerating and no other forces. Keep in mind we're ignoring any force due to gravity um, in any of these problems. That should be mentioned, actually. Animation 2, play. Try it again. Watch the motion. Okay. It might be a little jittery on this in this format, but you can watch it on the real simulation. So um, if you're not sure, take some measurements, but it looks like the velocity is constant. It's moving in a direction uh, the way it opposite the field. <clears throat> and so somebody's pushing it, right? And since it's moving at a constant velocity, that means the pushing force to the left has to be equal to the electric force on the particle to the right. Remember, the force on the particle is the charge times the field, which is uniform, so it's a constant force. <clears throat> electric force to the right and a constant applied force to the left. And so the net force is zero, so that's the free body diagram. And the particle <clears throat> is in, it, its um, potential energy is increasing, and it's at a place of higher electric potential, right? Because it's pushed uphill, it's up at this end. And um, the reason the energy and the potential are the same is because it's a positive charge. So you have to be careful when we get a negative charge, you'll see they'll be opposite. So let's try the next um, the next animation. Whoops. Animation three. Aha, it's a negative charge. So let's see what happens. So it looks like constant velocity going in the opposite direction than it naturally would. So this is the same um, situation as before, only it's a negative charge. So the negative charge, notice, is going from a place of low potential, of high potential, to low potential. So it's starting at a high potential and it's going to low potential. But because it's a negative charge, its energy is increasing. So it starts at high potential, it ends at low potential, but it starts at a low energy place, its energy increases. It goes to a high energy place, right? Because this charge has more energy in this position. And remember, the energy, I'll show you the equation actually. So from the definition, of electric potential rearranged, right? Electric potential is the electric potential energy per unit charge. When I rewrite it, I get the way of calculating the energy for a charge in a field. And so when the charge is positive, a, a change in potential and the change in energy will be the same. If the potential goes down, the energy will go down and vice versa. But for a negative charge, it's reversed. So here's a case where the electric potential decreased, but the electric potential energy increased. So this is negative. This charge is negative, so that becomes positive. So it can be confusing. You have to think about it, and it's better to understand it physically than mathematically, right? Clearly, if you have a negative charge here, and you put it here, you had to push it there, like compressing a spring, it has more energy 
even though it's at a lower electric potential. Okay, the last two animations. There's animation four. Let's try that. So it looks like acceleration. The thing is going the way that you would expect it to go if there were no external force acting on it. Um, and so there should just be a single force of the electric field acting on it. And it goes, um, its potential energy decreases, but the electric potential increase. It's kind of like a ball rolling up a hill. But when we have gravity, we only have one kind of mass. We don't have positive and negative mass. So it's different for electric charges. Okay, animation five. Play. Constant speed. So how would an object move that way? What should it do? This charge... If nothing acted on it, would go this way, but it's not. So what does that mean? There has to be a force holding it in place, but it's moving this way at what? A constant speed. So it has a potential energy that's changing or not changing? Not changing. It has an electric potential by its position, it's not changing, right? It's not going up or down. And it has kinetic energy, which is constant. So in this case, the energy is constant. The potential is constant. And it's not accelerating in this direction. So I know what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to put a force in this direction because it's moving in this direction. But remember, from first semester physics, an object moving at a constant speed has no net force along the y-axis and no net force along the x-axis. But since there's an electric force, there has to be an equal and opposite applied force. So that's the key to the free body diagram of this one. Okay, second problem. So here you have a map of an area and a voltage reader that you can drag around. So just take the voltage reader, drag around the map, and see if you can make sense of what's in this square. Spend a minute doing that. So what you might have discovered is that there are equipotential lines that have different values, and that if you go along the diagonal, the electric potential is zero. And if you go to the center of the circle, kind of like topographic map, like climbing a mountain, this would be like a mountain. You get a high positive value. And if you go past zero, this would be like a valley, right? Going into a low potential area where it reaches its maximum lowness. And you can read the position of the red indicator um, in the lower left-hand corner. So, and you can actually, if you look, you'll see arrows. They're not really field lines, and they go out from the positive area as if it's a positive charge, and they all converge. So it has almost like, it looks very much like an electric dipole with the field lines and the equipotential lines. Okay, so doing the problem is pretty much just placing um, the detector at the positions requested and recording the data. The only thing, if you haven't come across it, is, let me explain now, is the unit of electron volt is a unit of energy. So I'm going to uh, explain that to you. So this is our equation for calculating voltage. Uh, when uh, energy when you have the voltage. And so let's just say you measure this to be a negative 4 volts and you measure this to be a positive 4 volts, then the difference is going to be 8 volts. 
either a positive 8 volts if you go to here or a negative 8 volts if you go that way. And so the um, change in electric potential energy will be the Q times the change in voltage. So uh, if we had 8 volts and we multiplied it by the charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and remember a volt is a joule per coulomb, same thing, the coulombs will cancel and you have joules, so you just multiply the 8 by the 1.6, and what is that? 9.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. But an alternative way of doing it is to leave Q as 1E. Remember, 1, whoops, um, 1E is the charge on an electron or a proton. It's a unit of charge. It's equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And so if we use this unit instead of that unit, then the change in electric potential energy would be 1, whoops, 1E, e, I'm just using that unit, times 8 volts. And so that would be 1, I mean, it would be 8 electron volts. So uh, the E is a unit of charge, the volt is a unit of voltage, and so electron volt is an energy unit for a small amount of energy. And so if you have one E and one volt, that's one electron volt. So one electron volt has the same conversion as one electron, the same conversion, because if you multiply the one E by one volt and you multiply this by one volt, you get that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, uh, excuse me. <gasps> Joules. So this, these two same numbers, but this is a conversion of charge, this is a conversion of energy. So the electron volt is a unit of energy, and it's used when energies are very small. So like the energy of atoms, or the energy of the nucleus of an atom is often given in electron volts. So that's a unit of energy you'll need uh, both in the assignment and the lab. So it's good to know how to do that. So number three is five animations where you're moving a charge and in each case, um, let me reset this, so here's animation one and the charge gets moved from that position to that position, animation two Animation three, and so on. And so in each case, you have to calculate the change in electric potential. So that's, let me pause the video. So um, I'll do one of these for you. Uh, remember, change in potential is V final minus V initial. And the change in electric potential energy is the charge times the change in voltage. So since this is an electron, Q is either going to be a negative 1E to get electron volts or a negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So in animation 2, V final is 10. V initial is a minus 10, so 10 minus a negative 10 is 20. This is right, a change of 20 volts. There's a rise in 20 volts. So the change of voltage is a positive 20 volts. But if I multiply that by a negative 
one e for an electron times 20 volts, I'm going to get a negative 20 electron volts. And if I multiply it by negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus, actually negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, that's the charge on the electron, times 20 volts, you're going to get a negative, what, 32 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that's either in joules or electron volts. So that's what you do for all of them. So once again, you got to be careful. Positive charge, the change in voltage and the change in energy will be the same, but a negative charge, the uh, change in voltage and the change in energy are going to be opposite because the charge is negative. Okay. Number four is three different charge arrangements. There's two charges where one charge is unknown, three charge, uh, four charges where one of the charges is unknown, and three charges where one of the charges is unknown. And in each animation you have a red dot, which is a voltage reader, and you can put that wherever you want depending on the charge arrangement, in order to find the unknown charge. So, try and do that. See if you can figure out how to do it. If you can't come up with a good idea, I'll give you some suggestions. So, first find the position of each charge, and then take the detector and put it into some convenient place so that you can write an equation that V1 plus V2 equals V total, which you'll measure with the detector. And V1 is going to be K Q1 R1 plus K Q2 R2, and that will be equal to the V total that you measure. And everything's, no, everything's known except for the unknown charge. And so you just have to solve the equation for the unknown Q. So try that for this charge arrangement and see what you get. So what you should have found out was that this charge is negative 1 comma 1. And this charge is 1 comma negative 1, and that the center is 0, comma 0. You can find that with the uh, cursor reading the positions. And so uh, it would make, you could put this, actually you can put this red point anywhere you want. You could put it at 1, comma 1, actually, or you could put it at the center. If you put it at the center, Actually, let's try 1, 1. Actually, that'll be easier, truthfully. So place this at positive 1, positive 1. So I was unable to, you, you'll notice it's unable to get it exactly 1, 1, but it's 1.0065. And that's the value I got. So now, using that value, write the equation and solve it and find out what the unknown charge is. Okay, here's the solution. So, V1 plus V2 equals V total, right? The V from this and the V from this add to give you the total V. And the R, I use the 1.065, 1.065, so that distance is 2.013 meters here and here, the distance from the charge to the point. And they're both the same. And so there's the 628. I multiply both sides by the 2.13 meters. That cancels those. And then I divide by K. Whoops, 10 to the... 10 to the 9th, and um, so when you do this, 
you get 15.065 times 10 to the minus 10. And this is 5 times 10 to the minus 10. So you get pretty darn close to exactly 10 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs for the unknown charge. Um, an alternative method would have been to place the charge at the very center at 0 comma 0. So there you see it at 0 comma 0. Now try it again and see what you get. So I skipped the algebra that we did previously, and I had Q2 equals V total times the R, which is equal, divided by K minus the Q1. So there's the 9.546. In this case, this distance, this is 1 and 1. So this distance from the point to either charge is the square root of 2. And there's K. And subtract from that the 5 times 10 to the 10th. And once again, you get something very, very close to exactly 10 times 10 to the minus 10 coulomb. So we get the exact same result. Okay, I'm going to leave you on your own for the other two charge arrangements. So you can see there's several ways of solving it. Obviously, pick a way that's easy. Okay, see if you can do this on your own. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. But if you're stuck or you've done it and you want to see how I do it, uh, I'll give you some suggestions. So notice you have this uh, red charged particle, 1 millicoulomb, and the V above it is its velocity, so you want to reset it to start it at rest. And as I move it around, it tells the yellow band tells me the X and Y position of it and the voltage. So if I move it up here, you see it goes to negative 1 volt. Then it doesn't change, and once I get into the field area, the voltage is getting less and less negative until I reach this end where it goes to zero, and then it stays zero. So it starts changing from zero to increasingly negative values across here where it finally goes to a negative one volt, all in that region. And so you can place the charge wherever you want and run the simulation. And there's two ways of solving this. The way that we're going to use first is conservation of energy. So let me show you how to solve this problem by conservation of energy. Okay, before I explain those equations, let me move this into the field area and run the simulation. And you see what happens. It's accelerating through the field until it leaves the field, and then it moves at a constant velocity. So it's important to realize that this is, at this end you have um, zero volts, and at this end you have a negative one volt. So the field always goes, it would be like this is the negative plate and this is the positive plate. So there's a field going in this direction, and so the positive charge accelerates in that direction. But we want to look at it, we can look at it later from the point of view of force and acceleration, but right now let's look at it from the point of view of um, the law of, of energy. And so from an energy point of view, the charged particle here has a high potential energy, and as it loses potential energy, it gains kinetic energy. And so I write down from first semester the law of conservation of energy. The work by non-conservative forces equals the change in kinetic plus the change in potential. And a non-conservative force would be friction or some outside person pushing. That's not here. There is just the field and the charge. And so when I solve this, I get that the change in kinetic energy is equal to negative the change in potential energy, right? A gain in kinetic energy is a loss of potential energy. 
And so k final minus k initial equals q times the change in electric potential. You know that equation. And since the we're going to start it at 0, this is going to be 0. And so now let's solve this equation for mass. Go ahead, solve that equation for mass. Okay, so doing the algebra, should I go over it? Delta K equals, so K final equals this. So K final is 1 half MV final squared minus Q, oh, the delta V got lost. And when I solve for M, I get that M equals 2 negative 2Q delta V over delta V voltage over little v, v final squared. So there's our equation for solving this problem. Now we just got to run the simulation. So you need to place the charge um, in a position. where you know the voltage and let it run through some amount of voltage. So let me set it, you should do this on your own. Pick a voltage and, and let it run and then see if you can get an answer using that equation. So what often happens with these is you do things and then you figure out better ways of doing it. So I've done this a few times and here's a way I like. I set the um, charge at negative 0.2 volts and then I'm going to release it, play the simulation, and then I'm going to stop it when it gets to a velocity of 1. And I can do that with the stepping function, right? Whoops. It's not working. There it is. And so what do I see? I see it took two seconds to get to a velocity of one. Actually, I could calculate the acceleration, right? And now I just want to measure what the voltage is at the end. So I'm going to stop and do that. Actually, I can show you. It's at 0.7, negative 0.7 volts. So there's my delta V. So the final delta V was 0.07, and the initial was a negative. Th these are all negative, right? So the change in velocity, it went from negative 0.2 to negative 0.7. So it's a drop in voltage of a half a volt, right? Because you're losing potential energy and gaining kinetic. And so the charge is given, the change in potential is negative, that will make this positive, and the velocity, the final velocity of the particle is given, so you can calculate the mass. Just make sure you get all the units right. Okay, as a little extra bonus, let's now solve it using force. Newton's second law. So here's how we do it with force. The net force equals the mass times the acceleration. The only force is the electric force, so that's Q times E, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration, V final minus V initial over T, the V initial zero, and then we need to go, this is maybe something you haven't seen, but you're going to use it a lot, the relationship between field and voltage for a uniform electric field is this. The voltage is the field times the distance, or we get the field by taking the voltage and dividing it by the distance. So it went through a half a volt over what distance we need to measure that. And so we can bring that equation over here and then solve for mass. So I'll let you do that algebra step, solving for mass. And there's the equation for the mass in terms of those quantities. The Q is given. 
the V that we did here was a half a volt. The time is here. The final velocity is here. You just need to measure the distance over which that half a volt extends. So you got to measure that distance with your cursor and then you put those numbers in and you should get the same mass. So here we have five animations and in each case the charge starts at the center, it moves animation one, animation two, moves in the same direction, animation three, goes the opposite way, animation four, goes that way, and animation five, it remains stationary. Okay, so um, look at the situation and think about what you think should happen. And there's a few things to notice. The equipotential lines are straight, but they're not evenly spaced. And if you remember from the last one, if a if you have two charge plates and the field is uniform, the electric field is uniform, then the line should be evenly spaced. So if the distance, if you go from 0 to 5 volts over a smaller distance, what does that mean compared to going from 5 to 10 volts over a bigger distance? How does that affect the field that's producing that voltage? So think about <clears throat> which way it should go. <clears throat> and how it should move. And from the last simulation, remember this relationship that in a uniform field, <clears throat> the voltage is going to be the field times the distance. Or if we know the voltage, which is what we usually know, the field will be the voltage divided by the distance. So if the voltage changes by 5 volts, in a smaller distance, that means a bigger field, right? And with the equipotential lines, where a change of voltage of 5 volts, plus or minus, is over a larger distance, it means the field is weaker. So that should tell you something about how it moves. So from a field point of view, remember that the force on the charge... Uh, is the charge times the field. So stronger field, stronger force, stronger force, more acceleration. So that's one way to solve the problem. Um, the other way is energy. So if a particle moves, whichever way it's supposed to move, if a particle moves a distance of 5 volts, then it's going to have an increase uh, whichever way it decreases, right? Anyway, you should have figured out it's going to go this way. <laughs> a positive charge is going to go, it's going to lose potential energy if it's gaining kinetic energy. And so when it goes from here to here, it will gain, it will undergo Q delta V, and so it should gain as much energy here, it should gain that much more energy again. And so if the velocity doubles here, and it doubles again, that would be four times more energy, right? So if the velocity went to one here, it should only go to the square root of two here. And the velocity information is given, so that's one way of solving the problem. And the other way is to look at the acceleration, knowing the acceleration in this region should be higher than the acceleration in this region because the field is stronger in this region than it is in this region. So two approaches, the energy approach and the force approach in order to solve the problem. Okay, <clears throat> we saw this one in lab one and in this case we're going to solve it by energy rather than by force. And if we watch the simulation, you'll see that there's three energies. You see the charge is re 
repelling. So it comes down, it gets repelled by the charge and goes back up. So what are the three energies? Well, you have to answer that question. Kinetic, gravitational potential, that's what makes it go down. Electric potential, that's what makes it stop and go back up. And so to keep things simple, if we choose the two, the endpoints where there's no kinetic energy, then the energy equation becomes very simple. There's our familiar energy equation, and in this case, there's no friction, no outside agent, that's zero. And if we just pick the two endpoints, then K initial and K final, where the object isn't moving, will be zero. And so there's two potential energies. And so what we'll get is that the potential energy, the electric potential energy is equal to negative the change in gravitational potential energy. So when it starts at the high point, it has gravitational potential, and when it gets to the low point, all that gravitational potential is now stored in the two charges, right? Think about that. And so we have Q delta V, which is going to go up, equals MGH or MG delta Y, which goes down. There's a negative sign there, and the delta Y will be negative. So these will be two positive numbers that equal each other. And there's the Q we're looking for. So the Q that we want is simply mg delta y, I'll leave the negative sign, the delta y is negative, divided by the change in velocity, uh, excuse me, the change in voltage, and the voltage is due to this charge, right? So it's the voltage due to a point charge, so the voltage for a point charge is kq, that's the black Q over R. And so the delta change in voltage will be KQ R final minus KQ R initial. And I'll show you what all that means here in a minute. So anyway, here's our, these are the two equations that you need to solve the problem. So as instructed, you start at the reset position, and then you play the animation, and it comes down, and it stops, but we want it to go all the way down. So that's what you're instructed to do. You're instructed to move this charge so that it'll come all the way down. And if you move it too far, we always start at the reset position, right? If you move it too far, then the thing comes down and it smashes into the barrier, which means energy is lost, so we can't have that happen. So we need to adjust the location of the black charge such that the thing comes down and just... Okay, so I put it too close, right? It didn't come down close enough because we want to bring the green charge down so that it's not touching but just as close as you can get without touching. And so you adjust the black charge so that that happens. I'll let you play with that. You just do it by trial and error. And so the potential, so this is our, the, the, um, the distance between this charge and this charge is your R final. And reset, oops, reset. And so the distance between here and here is your R initial. But you're going to have to get the X and Y part, right? That's a triangle, so you can't just measure that directly because you only get from the simulation the X and Y coordinates. So you have to get this distance for our final and the distance I, sh I mean our initial and the distance I showed you here for our final. And the other thing is the difference in height 
between here and when it stops, that's the delta y that gives us the gravitational potential energy, right? And the mass of the particle is given. And you use this equation with the r final and the given q. We're calculating the potential due to this. So these two, this is, I should make this clear, this is the q charge on the table. This is the q pendulum that we don't know that we're looking for. So it's important to distinguish those two. You do have to take these measurements carefully. I warn you, measure very carefully. Make sure it's almost touching but not touching. And make sure you measure the center of the balls when you get their positions. And finally, just in case you want um, to find a specific problem, here are the numbers of all the problems and the times in the video when I start doing them.